Aloha and welcome to Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Movement Matters is designed to bring you not only the most effective physical therapy tips, but also holistic information to help you achieve total body wellness. Since this pandemic, people have been more active in their home environment, doing more gardening, home projects, and outdoor exercise, including regular walking, which is good. However, I'm seeing more back, hip, and knee injuries from this rise or simple change in activity level. I have a value-packed show for you today where I, your virtual physical therapist, will be providing you with simple tips and corrective exercises to do in your own home to resolve your back, hip, and knee pain and also help you overcome pain from hip or knee arthritis. First, I want to share with you the secret to ending low back pain in video number one. Let me introduce you to your secret weapon to end lower back pain and get a flatter stomach. Your transverse abdominus, or TA, as I call it, is your deepest abdominal muscle. It's been around since the beginning of time, just waiting for you to call on it to help support your back. But no one told you it was there. If you have back pain, you need your TA to form the anatomical girdle with your deep back muscles to support your spine. You see, the TA contracts just after your brain has the initial thought for motion. Your brain thinks, I want to reach for that glass of milk. Your TA fires, then your arm moves. Try it. Pull your belly button in toward your spine. Go ahead, suck it in. Now that you know it's there, use it before you move and enjoy a pain-free lower back. So there you have it. That's the secret to ending low back pain. I pulled that, I designed that right from an expert from my book that will be out in the next month or two on how to get rid of low back pain. But in addition to pulling your belly button in to engage your anatomical girdle, you wanna be sure that you have the proper flexibility in your glutes and your hamstrings, which can, when tight, put extra strain on your low back and make you more vulnerable for injury or pain. So if we look at video two, if you are suffering from back pain because you've been bending, cleaning, doing too much gardening, remodeling your home while you've been quarantined and staying at home, these stretches are the go-to. You wanna lay on your back, on a bed, on a floor, draw one leg up, clasp your hands in front of your knee, and hug your knee into your chest and you want to breathe three to five seconds it's an excellent stretch then you want to hug your knee to your opposite shoulder so your foot goes on the other side you put your outside hand on the outside of your knee and your inside hand somewhere on your shin and you hug your left knee up towards your opposite shoulder again breathe breathe in three to five seconds then to stretch your hamstrings, you want to clasp your hands behind your knee, let the knee relax, keep your shoulder blades squeezed and your head on the table, and then gently kick your legs straight to stretch those tight hamstrings. And the last one is to draw both knees into your chest, give them a hug and breathe three to five seconds. That will do great to relieve all the tension in the big glute muscles, your hamstrings to take the strain off your low back. Enjoy. Those stretches are excellent and they can be your first course of action if you have an episode of low back pain and they can also be your regular course of action. Now I've got a great question that just came in. Uh, is it better to sleep on your back side or belly? I often wake up with low back pain if I don't sleep on my back. And so that's a great question because it's something that many of my patients complain of in the morning, they have back pain, they catch themselves on their side or on their belly. It is optimal for your spine to sleep on your back with one pillow fit specifically for you for your neck and a pillow under your knees. However, we do roll around on our sides. Sometimes we end up on our stomach. Sometimes we prefer to sleep on our stomach. If you are a side sleeper, it is important to put a pillow between your knees to try to maintain the pelvic relationship with your knees so your spine doesn't strain all night long. And also our shoulders and our hips are wider than our waist. So if you're waking up in pain and you're a narrow-waisted person or a wide hip and shoulder person, 
you might actually need to roll a small towel and put it right in the shallow part of your waist when you're laying on your side to support your spine so your spine doesn't bend like this in the center all day long into your soft bed. So that's a great question. So I also have another exercise that we're gonna do right now that is great for alignment. It is great for back pain. It is great for poor posture. It is great for hip pain or hip arthritis. So let's look at video number three. If you have hip pain or hip range of motion limited because of severe arthritis or you have poor posture and having back pain, this is one of my favorites. It's one of those exercises that you're not really sure what it does, except for you know it does something and you always feel better afterward. So you're gonna to wanna to get on your hands and knees. You could do it on a bed, on a floor, anywhere. You're going to suck your stomach in to stabilize your spine always and sway your back like a horse that's been ridden too much and aim your tailbone to the sky and then you're gonna move your buns back towards your heels, but only as far as you can go, as pain will allow in your hip if your hip range of motion is limited, or if your back doesn't start to round. So you only wanna go back as far as you can, keeping your tailbone to the sky and sucking your stomach in without pain. So if you have hip arthritis, this is great. You may rock it back and forth here, 20 times and then pretty soon you feel that that pinch deep in your hip is going away. So I call it a, a modified version of quadruped rocking. So enjoy that wonderful stretch. I love that exercise and one thing I love about it is also if you do have knee pain you can do it on your bed. It doesn't have to be on a hard floor or anything like that. Now I want to talk about alignment a little bit for a bit and also the fact that I have a little bit more of an exceptionally swayed low back. Part of that is my anatomy, which is why I'm so passionate about teaching people how to suck it in to engage their anatomical girdle and protect or end their lower back pain or their low back injury that they're suffering from. Other people may be more rounded and maybe you've sat at a desk hunched over for 25 years and you've become more rounded and you can't achieve the horse that's been ridden too much position, that's okay. Just try to go for as much of a flat back or use the cue that I used, which is tailbone to the sky and only move back as far as you can while you're trying to keep that arch. Suck your stomach in, stabilize your spine, activate your anatomical girdle and aim those sit bones, aim that tailbone to the sky so that you will stretch your hamstrings, stretch your glutes, but more for those people who are suffering from osteoarthritis of their hip or maybe a congenital dysplasia, which is a shallow socket that people have, or sometimes your structure just isn't formed with a tight ball and a socket fit and it's more loose this way. This is a great exercise because with those conditions, the femur, the head of the femur, I almost said humerus, that's your shoulder. The head of the femur can migrate forward towards the joint capsule and cause your psoas muscle to tighten up to try to stabilize the joint. So this exercise, the quadruped rocking with your spine mildly swayed is to help make space in the posterior capsule of the joint so that that ball can sit further back in the socket and get rid of that groin pain or that front hip pain that you're suffering with every step while on your walk going up and down stairs. So why I mentioned alignment as well with this exercise is so many people tend to lean a little bit off to one side or you stand on one leg or you turn and watch the TV off to one side. Those are our repetitive patterns of comfort, our path of least resistance. When you do the quadruped rocking, your hands should be directly under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips and you're going straight back. So any muscle tightness that has happened say on one side because you've been leaning off to one side, one side tight and the other side stretched, gets stretched out and re-educated so your brain gets that pattern of straight and alignment not lean to one side not twisted to one side and i remember when i was in new york city and i gave this exercise to someone who when they rocked they deviated a little bit off to one side they had hip pain on one side i said i like to say this is for alignment but a lot it feels like you're not really doing anything and so he went and he said you know what i'm doing that 20 times a day i do 20 repetitions and that really does something. I don't know what it does, but I feel so much better afterwards. So I wanted to call 
that to everyone's attention. It doesn't feel like you're doing much, especially if you don't have hip pain or hip arthritis and you're doing it to align your spine because you've had poor posture or poor sitting habits that you weren't aware of. So do it anyway, do 20 repetitions. It's very, very important. So on alignment, since I'm talking about hip and knee and back pain, let's look at video number four, where I show some alignment doing a single leg squat. Aloha, let's talk about the young athlete. Why are young athletes so at risk for knee injuries? For one, it's usually because of alignment. They're not able to maintain this straight alignment with their shoulders, hips, knee, and ankle when they're running forward or jumping and landing. They end up having a collapse where either the hip drops or the knee dives in. And that happens from either foot weakness or tight calves that occurs after a recent growth spurt or hip weakness here where the hip muscle is not strong enough to stabilize them in this position. So when they go to bend, they'll drop here or the knee caves in. There's many ways to fix that. Stretch your calf, strengthen your hip muscles and work on proprioceptive training, which is balanced training and learning the new alignment until it becomes a motor plan, which I'll show you in some images to follow. I mention hip and knee alignment here with the high school athlete because I've seen too many young athletes coming in, probably after a growth spurt. I was one of those people that sprained my ankle, injured my knee, hurt my hip, dislocated my shoulders. I grew too fast and my muscles and everything hadn't stabilized. I was told back then I was 12. So I kept injuring myself. And so I bring up the high school athlete because it's one of those things that we go through a growth spurt and we may have been fine two years ago playing soccer, high jumping, playing volleyball and landing from a jump or running cross country, whatever the sport is that is a running or a jumping or a moving sport. They may have been landing perfectly last year and now they've grown. And one side has that dysfunctional pattern that I'm showing, I showed you in that video where the knee dives in or the hip drops because the muscles haven't stabilized that, that athlete's body because of the growth spur. And it can happen on one side. And I typically do see that. So to prevent young athletes from injury, we need to stabilize the hip to help support the knee. But also for all of us who have been at home, maybe walking more, bending in the garden, going up and down the stairs in our homes, tackling sorting projects that we might not have had time before because we were commuting to and from the office, it's very important to stabilize your hip to control that abnormal alignment because abnormal alignment leads to wear and tear at our joints, which leads to arthritis. So if someone like that young athlete is doing a single leg squat with their knee diving in, every step their knee isn't bending this way it's bending this way and so over time every time you go up a stair every time you go down a stair your knee is twisting and then that is causing abnormal wear and tear which will lead to arthritis in your knee now if you're that athlete where the hip is dropping and i show the trunk kind of leaning over to the side and you see the key the 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 hip dropping down and caving in that is hip weakness that is driving that alignment dysfunction. And you need to strengthen the big hip muscles to stabilize your pelvis on your leg like this so it can stay here instead of dropping down over and over again, creating abnormal movement of your hip joint in the socket, which causes it to wear and wear and wear and can lead you down to arthritis. So all that said, the hip muscles are what control the rotation of your thigh bone not your quadricep muscles per se, it's your hip muscles, they're rotators. So while we will strengthen your knee, and I'll show you later, you really need to strengthen your hip muscles for your hip and to control that extra motion at your knee that you may be having when you're going down the stairs. So let's look at image number five, and I'll talk you through it. So you're gonna pull your toes up, you're gonna squeeze your buns tight and press your knees down, and you will slide both your legs away from each other. The reason why I want you to push down, <clears throat> excuse me, is I want you to feel the muscle directly behind the, the hip ball, the bump on the side of your hip. That's your gluteus medius muscle. And that is what's gonna help stabilize your pelvis on your leg when you go up or down your stairs. So what I tell people to do is to squeeze, pull your toes up, press your knees down, slide both your legs away from each other at the same time for 10 repetitions. 
then reset, lift your toes up, squeeze your buns, and then you slide one leg out for 10 times. So now you're using the opposite leg to stabilize you while you exercise one leg. Then you reset, toes up, buns tight, press down, slide your other leg out for 10 times. You will feel a burn, most likely, doing those 30. If you don't, you can do another set of the open. That's a great exercise. That's my first course of action that really helps to strengthen the gluteus medius muscle to help your knee and help your hip while you're going up and down stairs, while you're landing from a jump, while you're running, which is repetitive jumping, and any other activity that we may be doing more of now during this pandemic. So now we're gonna put the gluteus medius to work in function. So we're gonna look at image number six, where you're gonna have a band around your ankles, your feet are gonna be pointing directly in front of you, and your feet are wide. You're gonna suck it in because now you know that's a secret to ending low back pain. And you are gonna, I crab walk is kind of what I've called it all of my career. Um, Sidestepping is another word, monster walks I've heard. And you're gonna wide walk step by step, to the side, never letting your feet come together because you don't want to slack the band, that would be too easy. So you'll take a little step and then a little step, little step, little step. You can go down your hallway, back and forth, all the way to the right, and then you come back to the left, sucking your stomach in, exercising your gluteus medius, and putting it into function because function is being on our feet. So I've got another question. Thank you so much for sending these questions. These are, these are fantastic. I love to be able to provide this show for you to have the right information and the exercise so that you can do it in your own home. So what are the best preventative exercises someone can do to avoid or hip or knee replacement? Uh, and just the second part of the question, if someone has challenges walking up or downstairs uh, due to knee pain, what can they do? So to answer the first question, I have a, a series of hip exercises that I call the hip rotator cuff exercise. It's a four by four. So let's go to video number seven to show those. What I have found to be the most effective series for hip strengthening exercises, whether you have tendonitis, knee pain, hip pain, hip arthritis, is to get the deep hip rotators functioning properly. So to do that, I do a hip four-way series, I call it. So you lay on your side, bend your knees, and you do a clamshell. I do 10, then you hold it open, and you tap your foot from horizontal back to your other foot. Then you bring yourself in alignment so you're in a straight line with your knees bent and then you clamshell again for 10. After that, you hold the knee up and tap your foot. Now to get your gluteus medius, you go in a straight line. Make sure you're not forward, but in a straight line and you lift up and down. You wanna make sure you don't lift up so high that you use this muscle. You only wanna use this muscle. So that's about all you need to do. You'll get a good burn and you'll rescue your lower body. Enjoy. So those are my favorites. And I had a very big problem with my hip playing beach volleyball in San Diego. I kind of somewhat dislocated it and, and tore the labrum. And I was trying to find a way to do what I was explaining to you in the quad rocking, which is to get the head of my femur back up into the socket so it wasn't causing me the groin pain. And those exercises that I just showed you were terrific and really were the thing that got me, including the quad rocking, that got me out of the water and got me back to running and playing volleyball at the time. So to answer the second part of the question, which is if someone has challenges walking up or downstairs due to knee pain, what can they do? So there's something that's called a hip strategy that I use on my patients who have hip or knee pain, but mostly knee pain walking up and down the stairs. So let's play video number eight. When you have hip or knee arthritis, it's often very painful to go up and down stairs. And many of us have stairs in our homes, stairs into the doctor's office, or stairs into different stores. So this is a hip strategy. And what this does, is it puts more load into the muscles of the hip than into the knee muscles and takes less force off the front of the knee. So what you wanna do is instead of going up and down the stairs, straight up and down like this, it feels a little funny at first, but it works great. You wanna bend at your hips so you're sticking your buttock back, your back is straight, and then you step up. So you go back, it's like a little bit of a crouch, and then you step up. You will immediately feel the load going right into your powerful glute muscles, 
and your hamstrings. And the same thing uh, for going down, let's say I'm up on this small step, I don't want to go down like this, which puts a ton of force right on the front of the kneecap. I want to kick my rear back and then step down. You can see when I kick my rear back, my knee automatically bends and you feel the load go into that. It might take some practice, but please try it. Every time I use that strategy, I get the same reaction. So now I just preface it with, it feels weird. It feels like you're crouching down. I've had my family members do it, my patients do it. I, young and old, everyone says the same thing. When I do that, my knee doesn't hurt going up and down stairs. It just feels strange because you feel like you're very crouched down, but you do feel, try it. You do feel the load and the tensing back in your glute back in your hamstring and it takes the load off your knee. So if you've got knee pain and you're going up and down stairs multiple times a day or you live in a home like I do that has stairs, you wanna make sure you use your hip strategy and you don't overuse the compression on your knee and then you can decrease your risk for having knee surgery and a knee replacement by taking that repetitive load off your knee. So I love this, we have another question. I need to do knee exercise on the bed. When I do this while pressing my knee to the mattress, it hurts one of my knees. Is there something I can do to help with this exercise? This is perfect timing. Thanks for sending that because I was just gonna go into a knee exercise. So in the next video, I show a knee exercise. And in the second part of the video, I show me putting my hand underneath the back of my knee to press into and a roll underneath the back of my knee to press into. If your knee's hurting when you press it down, we don't want you to have pain when you do these exercises. We want it to be pain-free. So our job as physical therapists is to try to find a way that you can perform an exercise without pain while you're getting your body healed. So let's look at video number nine. Many patients have come in complaining of knee pain as they've been doing a lot of yard work, doing a lot of bending while they've been doing more home projects. So I wanted to show you a very simple exercise to help your knee from suffering from pain. One of them is called a quad set. And so you want to put your legs straight on some surface here, and then you just push the back of your knee down. So you take the back of your knee and you push down. It tightens your thigh muscle. You can do 10 or 15 of those. Should be pain-free. If it isn't pain-free, you could put a little folded towel underneath and give your knee something to press and to tense this muscle in the front of your thigh. To progress that, you put a roll or a beach towel or something behind your knee. You can see it better from here. And then you lift your lower leg. So you're pushing the back of your knee down here and lifting the lower leg. Do about 10 to 15 of those to really activate that muscle. And then you swing over into your chair and then you kick it straight. So you're just straightening like this, resting on a chair. Try those. So I, I want you to try that. So you can fold a towel underneath your knee or roll a towel and press down. However much you need, you can bunch up a blanket so that your knee is not hyperextending into the soft surface of your bed because you want to be able to engage the thigh muscle above your kneecap without having knee pain. So you may need to adjust the surface that you're doing on it like that using the roll, fold the towel so that you don't have knee pain. Because I, I'm not really sure if I answered the question earlier about is there exercises or are there exercises you can do to prevent a total hip replacement or a total knee replacement. But for the total hip replacement, I have many patients that are coming in with severe arthritis in their hips and they're planning on getting one in the future, but let's say they wanna wait 10 or 15 years until they're older and they just wanna make it through. So the exercise prescription is, is extensive but I do have, for the people that are trying to prevent their hip replacement, I do have them do quadruped rocking so that I can get them a little bit more range of motion. Again, I want it to be pain-free. So if you rock back and you get a pinch, that's as far as you rock back. And then you just stay before that pinch for 20 repetitions and you do it every day. And you will notice that you're going a little bit further and further back as you open up that hip joint. When we have arthritis, sometimes it's a square peg in a round hole, so to speak. And you may never get the full range of motion because there's degeneration in the joint, but you can also achieve full pain-free pain function as you go about your day. And that's what we're trying to get. The next thing I will have them do is try to stretch out their hip muscles. Like I showed you in the back stretches, but you have to go gently. And there's, there's other hip stretches. I'll have to maybe do that in the next show. I didn't have a video for that. 
but also it's important to do my hip rotator cuff where you lay on your side. You might not be able to use the band at first because you may have pain. So you can do that four way clamshell that I showed earlier to help engage your deep hip rotators. And those exercises are great to help you prevent your hip replacement or get you to pain free so that you can enjoy what you're doing right now if you're intending to have it in the future. Also, if you're trying to prevent or hold off a knee replacement or just function better because you don't wanna have your knee replacement for six months or you can't have it for six months, you're waiting and you wanna be able to function now because you're in excruciating pain, doing those quad sets and the short arc quads where you have the roll underneath you will help you a lot. Stretching your hamstrings, like I showed in the back video, will help you tremendously. And also, which I think you learned when we were talking about alignment, strengthening the gluteus medius muscles. So you land your back, you put the band around your ankles, you push down and slide. Now, every now and then I have someone that likes to bend their knee when they slide or lift their leg. And why this is a problem if you have knee pain is because it will hurt your knee. Your knee is no longer stable when it's not locked. If you bend your knee a little bit and you slide, the knee is going to move and that's going to cause that twisting and you will have pain. So you need to make sure you lock the knee, press your knees down, pull your toes up, squeeze your buns and slide apart because you also get a quad set when you press your knee down. Those are some of my favorite exercises as well as the hip rotation four by four because I mentioned before, your hip controls the rotation of your thigh bone. So if you're getting that excess rotation on your stairs, that's leading you to have knee pain and you're doing the hip strategy well, because I know you will be now, then you want to exercise your hip to stabilize that thigh bone so it's not twisting so much while you're going downstairs and then your knee won't hurt as much. So I hope that as you answered your question. So we're about out of time. I hope that you enjoyed this. I can't wait to hear more questions in two weeks of what you would like me, your virtual physical therapist to provide for you. You've learned the secret to end low back pain. So please, practice that. And two weeks ago, virtual physical therapist number one, I showed you how to engage that in a video. If you would like more information, we'll look at image 10, which shows you that I post regularly on Instagram, which is Christine Linders PT. And I also do it on Facebook, which is Christine Linders Physical Therapy. And you can go on there and get a wealth of videos and information. They're quick, they're short, they're for a wide range from jaw pain to ankle pain to shoulder pain, you name it. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much Think Tech Hawaii and all our sponsors and donors for allowing us to bring this to you in your home. Stay safe everyone and I'll see you in two weeks. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist.